Call the air and that lets you save the Who cares? True form life. Green look on the Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. Welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. Whether you're listening on terrestrial radio across the country or as a podcast around the world, we certainly wouldn't be here without you. Today I'm bringing on another fantastic guest, Ariel Garten, and she is amazing. She's doing all kinds of things for your brain waves through meditation. Now, I'm super excited to share this with you. I feel like everyone should be meditating at least a little bit at a time. Now, of course, there's all kinds of different forms of meditation. This is more the conventional type of meditation, but Ariel's going to talk about how you can meditate for one minute, 30 seconds, three minutes, and then she's going to list some studies about 10-minute meditation, 20-minute meditation, all very interesting. I think in most cases, we feel to see any benefits at all, we have to sit for an hour and not be able to think about anything at all. <laughs> Definitely not the case. Ariel also invented a very cool muse she's going to talk about here to help you track your meditation and your brain waves. So sit back and enjoy. We got all that coming up. Uh... This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. All right, welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated Exploring Mind and Body. Super excited to have Ariel with us online. Welcome to the show, Ariel. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm super excited to jump into this interview. We have talked about meditation in the past, but I think we always have different points of view, different angles, and different ways to approach a subject, especially one as important as meditation. Can you give us a chance to learn about you for a bit, how you got into teaching meditation and designing your own products, and then give us give our audience a chance to resonate a little bit? Sure. So, hey, my name is Arielle. I'm a mom of a three-year-old. I'm also the founder of a company called Muse. We make a brain-sensing headband that helps you meditate. And in addition, my background comes from neuroscience. So I was trained as a neuroscientist and worked in neuroscience research labs. I was a psychotherapist um, and design. Um, I actually had a clothing company. So my whole life has been moving between these worlds of kind of art and understanding how we create experiences that are meaningful for people through design and hard tech and science, understanding how we actually use science to understand what goes on inside and software things like psychotherapy and meditation where we help people understand their thoughts and feelings and how those can lead us to living a better life. So it's been this amazing marriage between building tools and you know scientific and technical tools for the mind, this very non-scientific and non-technical thing. Where, where did your background come from? Why were you like, I need to learn about brains and how they work and why they work? My mom was an artist. And so, uh, you know, she would make these beautiful paintings. And from her imagination, from nothing, she would make something amazing in the world. And so from there, I understood that art was important. But I also really wanted to know why things worked. Like, you know, why is the table hard? Why do I see the color is red? Why am I angry? Why are these things happening? And that led me down the path of science. Um, and, and just got very lucky that I was able to do that. So what kind of schooling does it take to be a neuro, neuroscientist? Um, so I went to the University of Toronto where I studied neuroscience. Um, and then when I graduated, I started working research labs. And then I got postgraduate training as a psychotherapist and then opened my own psychotherapy practice. Um, but continued to work in research labs and then ultimately found my own neuroscience based company and you know we run a lab here as well so what are you studying when you or when are you doing research when you said you're in the lab or um what, what does that look like or what are you doing in there um so here in our lab at muse uh we are looking at the brain activity associated with meditation and we've built this amazing device called muse that actually tracks your brain during meditation and is able to give you real-time feedback to know 
when you are focused and when your mind is wandered. So, you know, most people know that meditation is really good for you, but meditation is really hard to do. You sit there, your brain kind of bounces all over the place. You're like, what's going on? And there's like no little guru sitting inside your brain telling you what's going on or if you're doing it right. And we recognize that we could use the EEG technology that's used in laboratories to actually solve that problem and to be able to track your brain during meditation to know when you're focused and to know when your mind has wandered and to be able to guide you back into the state of focused attention, to basically let you know when you're meditating and guide you into doing it right. And that has emerged into a product that's basically like a Fitbit for the mind. It's a little headband that you wear um, that's sold all over the world and used by hundreds of thousands of people and hundreds of research institutions, moms, dads, teachers, consumers, everyone to help them meditate. So what's the first step? When someone says, I have struggle, I, I have a hard time with meditation. I don't really know how to make it work. How do we get into a proper, well, we call them healthy habits, but everyone calls them something. How do we get into a proper routine so we can get some meditation done during the day? Sure. So the first thing to know about meditation is it doesn't matter how well, you know, it doesn't matter how long you're doing it for. You know, the main thing to do is to choose a time and start doing it. You know, thinking about going to the gym doesn't help you. Going, actually going to the gym helps you. Going to the gym every day is the thing that actually builds the habit and gets you stronger. So if you want to meditate, um, the most basic form of meditation is called focused attention meditation. And in focused attention meditation, what you do is you put your attention on your breath. When your mind wanders from your breath, which it of course will, you notice that your mind has wandered and you choose to come back to your breath. So rather than following your wandering mind, you're like, nope, back to my breath. And you do it over and over again. So every time your mind wanders, you notice it and you come back to your breath. Now, this might seem incredibly simple and you're like, how is this helping me? But this simple exercise is actually very profound. So when you put your attention on your breath and then it wanders away and you choose not to follow your wandering thoughts, you're actually changing your relationship with your thoughts. So most of us just kind of go through the world with thoughts in our head, and we assume that's what's supposed to happen. There are thoughts in my mind, I'm thinking them, and those are just, those are the thoughts I have. The moment you choose to not follow your thought and put your attention elsewhere, you have shifted the relationship with your thoughts. You can now choose the contents of your own mind in your own thinking. And this is super powerful because the vast majority of thoughts that we have are not actually very helpful to us. They're often repetitive, they're negative, they're stressful. And so now all of a sudden you have a tool that lets you identify that you're having a thought, that it's a stressful thought to say, hey, I don't need to have this thought right now. I can put my mind somewhere else. And that is unbelievably liberating. Liberating because you're not trapped by your own mind and liberating because it has amazing positive effects for your body as you start to unwind the stress response and the stress cycle that typically holds us in. So do you re recommend the same time of day? So the best way to build a habit is to choose a time of day where it's going to be natural for you. For some people, that's the morning. For some people, that's the evening. For some people, it's right when you come home from work. It really doesn't matter what the time is. The best time is the time that's right for you. And make the commitment to do it every day, even if it's just for one minute. To say like, oh, it's my meditation time. Stop, sit down, close your eyes, stop where you are, it doesn't matter, and meditate for one minute. And then over time, expand it. Three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. You're gonna start to see the real benefits when you're doing it 10 minutes a day but you're not gonna see any of the benefits unless you start, so even three minutes a day is sufficient. And we have studies with Muse where people are just doing it for 10 minutes a day and they're seeing you know, significant benefits in their mind and body. Just wanna take a minute to mention Complete Truth Protein. This is a protein supplement that we designed at True Form. We believe in food. We believe food heals, cures, and prevents. That's why this product is much different than your conventional types of products. Unfortunately, packed with chemicals, preservatives, toxins that our body doesn't know how to utilize, digest, and absorb. So that's why Complete Truth Protein can help improve your digestion and will offer a natural boost of energy. You can find more details at trueformlife.com slash complete truth protein. What would be a goal for time? I don't know, maybe there isn't one, but is there a goal for time? Like, should you work towards an hour a day or a time consistently throughout the day or, or does it matter? 
So 20 minutes a day seems to be a good goal for people. Um, and that's what a lot of the studies on meditation are usually utilized, 20 minutes per day. Um, with Muse, we have a study done by Baycrest Hospital, and they showed that individuals using Muse for 10 minutes a day after six weeks saw improvements in their relationship to their symptoms, so like headache, pain, and nausea. Um, they saw increase in calm, and they saw improvements in cognitive function in a stressful task. Um, in another study uh, done by a university in Italy, they were able to show uh, the same set of improvements in people doing it for 10 minutes a day up to 20 minutes a day. And then they also saw actually persistent changes in brain activity at 20 minutes a day that suggested that people were actually spending more time in calm and focused states. How often do you meditate? Every single day. For how long? It depends. Um, so, you know, some days it might be a 20 minute meditation. Sometimes it's 20 minutes in the morning when I'm lying in bed and an hour at night. Sometimes it's three minutes in the morning and, you know, a couple of short breaks throughout the day. You know what I find is interesting is that when I meditate, I feel like I have more time in the day, almost like that I'm creating space in between tasks. But most people say I don't have time for meditation. <laughs> <laughs> It's really ironic. Yeah, meditation really does make more time. And for a couple reasons. One, when you are in the present moment, there's the sense of, it's called time dilation. It feels like time stands still. So when you are truly in the present moment, it feels like time is slower because you are here and now. You are with it. You're experiencing like, you know, the brightness and the intensity of it and the goodness and the colors and, and the aliveness. And that is very full. Each moment is just good and full. And then the other reason you feel like you get more time when you meditate is because you cut out all the distractions. So, you know, if I'm like writing a document Prior to my meditation practice, it would have taken me a really long time because, you know, you think about Facebook and you spend time there and you think about these things and somebody walks by, you're like, oh, they need me. Um, but once you have a practice and particularly training with Muse really helped me do it because it allows you to notice your distractions instantly and rewards you for coming back to the present moment, to your breath. Um, I was able to just go like, oh, distraction, don't need it. Back to my work. I'm interested know, to know about the studies that you've created what does that look like? Like, How many people are doing, when you talk about these case studies, how many people are doing it? I know you mentioned a six-week duration. Can you give us a few details of what I'm interested in that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so overall, there are literally hundreds of thousands of people that use Muse regularly. Um, and then we've partnered with a number of amazing research institutions. There's probably several hundred different clinicians that use Muse, um, research institutions and researchers, and they've published about 200 different papers uh, using Muse, either as a neuroscience tool or as a meditation tool. So in one study that was recently published by the Mayo Clinic, um, they looked at average, sorry, they looked at women who were undergoing breast cancer surgery, and they were using Muse for uh, several weeks prior to surgery, and then as long as they wanted post-surgery. And what they saw was that these women had an improvement in their quality of life, they had a decrease in stress, and they had a decrease in fatigue during their cancer care process. And Mayo was incredibly excited by this, and they've now signed us up for uh, three different studies in different conditions. Um, and the sample size of these studies vary. So in the Catholic University of Milan, it was probably a sample size of 40 versus 40 controls. I think Mayo Clinic would have been probably 30, around 30 to 40 people as well. Um, so, you know, small sample size, but like amazing institutions doing great work saying like, yep, this trial looks really promising. Let's keep going. And when you look at the validation of meditation overall, there's literally a thousand published studies demonstrating the validity of meditation. And, you know, what Muse helps you do is meditate, you know, essentially more effectively or to start or enhance your practice. So it's, you know, not surprising that we're seeing these kind of benefits with the studies we're doing with Muse. It, okay, very interesting. And so, for example, you said that it improved their quality of life. How can you yeah. tell if it improved their quality of life or what are you gauging that on? Um, so, uh, this was Mayo study. And so, the 
women were using Muse uh, at least once a day, as many times as they wanted, though. And uh, pre and post, they had a quality of life questionnaire. And it's a standard questionnaire that's used in these kinds of studies that asks questions like um, their level of happiness, their level of pain, their level of fatigue. Um, and at the end, it's uh, they have a, um, a pre and post questionnaire that they uh, compare the last one to the first one and they say was there an improvement across these various different domains you know family life happiness social happiness um uh, physical happiness etc what do you tell people when they say i don't have time for meditation <laughs> if you've managed to make time in your day to brush your teeth you will have time for meditation and when you were three years old you probably thought you didn't have time to brush your teeth either <laughs> it seems like a really big deal and now it's nothing um <laughs> So the best way to make time for meditation is to put it in your calendar. Choose the time of day that you're going to do it and simply commit to doing it. And so choose, you know, commit to why you want to meditate. Commit to what you're meditating for. So make it really, make your motivation bright to you. Are you meditating because you want to be calmer? Are you meditating for your kids so you don't yell at them as much? Are you meditating so you can be more productive at work? Make that really bright and shiny. And then every time you see that calendar notification... Think about the motivation and those moments when you're like, I don't feel like doing it now. And know that you can just do one minute. Calendar notification pops up. I'm going to meditate for one minute and then work your way up from there. I've had numerous conversations over the years and some people struggle with that tangible benefit of like, how do you measure that this time (laughs) that some people feel that they could be wasting is beneficial in some way. So tangibly you can measure i've been able to meditate starting at one minute and now i can meditate for 45 minutes but to see that result do you have anything like i'm just curious to know when next time someone says tells me that meditation is a waste of time i can be like nope check this out <laughs> you totally there's there's a ton of results that say that um so there's one study by dr eileen luters and she looked at uh, brain age of long-term meditators and she was able to determine that a long-term meditator has a brain that looks on average 7.5 years younger than a non-meditator and when you looked at her definition of a long-term meditator it was five years so people meditating for five years or more uh, may end up with brains that look on average 7.5 years younger than a (laughs) non-meditator that is a good investment of time so what does that what do you mean when you say that their brain looks younger your, your um, brain ages with age, like it becomes less able to remember things, etc. Yeah. So this was um, was an MRI study. So they're looking at the like the physical qualities of the brain. And as you age, your prefrontal cortex thins. So the part of your brain responsible for um, higher order processing, um, organization, attention. But somebody with a long term meditation practice, it can be able to maintain the thickness of their prefrontal cortex, even as they age. Um, and as you age, your hippocampus shrinks, that's a part of your brain responsible for learning and memory. But somebody with a long term meditation practice um, can maintain the size of their hippocampus, for example. So when you look at, at the actual like physical matter of the brain, um, it looks like in a long term meditator, it looks like it's not aging as, as much as somebody who hasn't been meditating. This is bringing me way back to college days, but I did study criminal justice. Maybe this is way off topic, but I remember that there was one part of the brain for like serious criminals that was bigger than the other. Was that the frontal lobe or something? Do you, do you know? Um, so it, it's probably the amygdala and that's the part of your brain responsible for flight or fight. Okay. Um, um, and for serious criminals, it can be very large. But for psychopaths, it can be completely gone, um, like very low amygdala activity. So there's 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 your funny little tidbit for today. <laughs> okay, and is that would meditation help with either of those? <laughs> so yeah, so meditation down regulates your amygdala. So the amygdala is the part of your brain responsible for reactivity, for getting angry, for you know, for reacting in bad ways. Um, and meditation down regulates that uh, amygdala activity, so you're able to regulate yourselves more effectively. Yeah, this is interesting. Okay, so tell me some more benefits in this regard of like people that have trouble dealing with anxiety probably or depression or sometimes people just struggle to handle their, or their emotions like they get cut off in traffic and fly off the handle. How does meditation help these issues? 
literally what meditation is built for. So specifically how it helps is you learn to not get caught up in all the thoughts associated with it. So, you know, you're in traffic and somebody cuts you off. You know, you immediately have like, oh my God, that whatever, you know, he's going to blah, blah, blah. So with meditation, you're able to manage your thoughts and you're able to manage your body, your physical reactions. So rather than jumping into anger, or fight or flight, people who have a meditation practice don't get as angry. And when you get as angry, you don't ramp it up. It's not like, oh my God, I feel angry. So I have all these angry thoughts and I'm really angry and it spirals forward. In meditation, you actually stop the thought feeling cycle. So you, you know, might have some feeling in your body, which you've, of course, you know, calmed through your meditation practice regularly. You might have some thoughts in your head, but you're able to deal with those effectively. So you don't feel like you're want to fly off the handle and hurt somebody. One of the most common things that people who meditate say is it gives you time between the stimulus and the response. You're like a thing happened and rather than immediately reacting, you can observe the situation and then you can just gracefully respond. I want to take a moment to tell you about Detoxify Yourself. Now, Detoxify Yourself is really a personal story that I put together in a book for my clients and family and those interested in how I teach to live a healthy lifestyle. I had no idea it would become a bestseller in a major city, Calgary, Alberta, where I grew up. I was on Global News, and I want to share more about it with you right now. So Detoxify Yourself talks about the main food substances that I choose to avoid, which is no gluten, dairy, soy, or GMOs. So this is a 30-day meal plan that avoids all those substances. It also talks about the toxins not only we put in our body, but we put on our body as well and the toxins we surround ourselves with like a toxic environment. So if you want more details about Detoxify Yourself, if you want to kickstart on how to avoid these toxic substances, I have all the recipes laid out for you. I have all the information. It's very simple and easy to follow. So head over to trueformlife.com for more details. Okay, so that's anger, frustration, and how about anxiety, depression? They're all in the same boat. So anxiety is the feeling that something is dangerous or wrong when it really isn't. Um, And so meditation helps you manage that as well. With anxiety, you get, you know, a ton of thoughts of the things that are going to be terrible. So with meditation, you learn to not buy into those thoughts, to just let them pass. And with anxiety, you get a lot of sensation in your body of like buzziness and, you know, racing, racing sensations in your body which are uncomfortable and with anxiety again you get to with meditation again you learn to calm those down um and you don't feed them forward have you had the opportunity i was super fortunate i had the opportunity to go to sri lanka for five or six weeks and i bumped into a group of how do you say they weren't monks in particular but they meditate for hours a day one of the main guys brought me to a monk sanctuary there's like elephant like it was a real it wasn't like a tourist attraction it was crazy there's like elephants walking around the camp um and they I, like i have the f- uh, fortunate ability to stay in contact with them every once in a while they give me little tips and suggestions have you worked with any buddhists or is that something in the future or any let's say monk type of individuals to study their brain waves absolutely So when we first started this, we looked at, you know, average individuals who were meditating and looked at their brain activity. And we also looked at monks It literally sat on the top of a mountain with, you know, long, 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 long term meditators tracking their brain activity as they shifted from state to state. And actually, um, University of Victoria took muses up into the Himalayas and put muses on the heads of uh, monks in the monasteries at the base of Mount Everest to uh, track their brain activity there and do research with it. Um, So what happened? (laughs) So what they discovered, what they were actually looking at was a focused attention meditation versus compassion meditation, two different forms, and uh, which would lead to better cognitive improvements. And part of what they saw was that when you did a focused attention, when these monks did a focused attention meditation, they had an improvement in cognitive function right after their meditation. Though when they did a compassion meditation, they didn't see the same improvement in cognitive function. Very interesting. What did they think of them? Did they have any feedback or did they speak English? 
Um, so I didn't have the good fortune of being there. Um, the university took them off and did the research okay. independently. Um, but you know, the response we always get is quite positive. People are, are amazed by it. It's like a, it's a slim little device. It literally is like a Fitbit. It's, it's not big, but it's a real clinical grade EEG. And it gives you this, you know, magic of being able to understand your mind during meditation. It's, how does it hook up? Like, how are you able to see your brain waves? Um, so you slip on the headband. And it's just like a little headband, and it connects to the app on your phone. And from there, you're able to hear the sound of your mind. And the metaphor uses your mind is like the weather. So when you're thinking or distracted, you actually hear it as stormy. And as you come back to focused attention, it quiets the storm. So it's this really simple audio feedback. It's this, like quite beautiful experience. And then after the fact, you have data, stuff that actually shows you what's going on in your mind, and you can see your improvement. Then there's also sensors to track in the same device to track your heart, your breath, and your body. So you're literally learning about all of your physiological symptoms, uh, systems, but in this very, very simple way. So it's taken this complicated science and made it so that you know somebody who doesn't speak English can can understand it intuitively. You know, literally, we have a study going with Baycrest Hospital with uh, very elderly individuals using Muse, um, and they can use it easily. And so it's this really intuitive way to understand your mind and body during meditation that either helps you start your practice if you've never meditated before, it just gets you meditating. And if you have an existing practice, gives you a new insight into it. Okay. So once you, so you can hear whether your mind is mm -hmm. quiet or like the weather, that may, may be yeah. a thunderstorm. <laughs> yeah, totally. Ariel, is there anything that we missed before we wrap things up here? Yeah, so a new area that's really interesting for us is sleep. One of the things that we discovered is that people were often using Muse in the evening to help them fall asleep. So we actually just came out with this brand new device called Muse S that gives you um, meditations and guided feedback um, designed to help you fall asleep faster. So that's been super exciting. And then along with it, we have a suite of guided meditations for basically anything that comes up in your life, you know, for performance, for work, for relationships, you know, anything that comes up, we have a meditation for that that can help you understand how to manage yourself through it. And who's coming up with the meditations? Oh, dozens of teachers. So we work with top meditation teachers all over the world. Some of them Buddhist monks, some of them secular teachers, um, you know, some of them school teachers, uh, some of them domain specific experts because we have like a baseball collection and a first responders collection, a veteran collection. So we work with experts in all these different fields. Cool. All right. So is that, is that what's next for you? Do you guys have anything else coming up or is that what you're working on now that's new? Yeah, Muse has just launched, so that's that's brand new, the whole collection for sleep. And where can we find out more details or where can we purchase? You can find it at choosemuse.com. That's simple. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure. My sincere pleasure. Thank you. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and sticking around till the end. That was an absolute pleasure. I love that interview. I love meditation and breathing exercise and learning to de-stress and mentally detox your body. So many benefits from taking some time out of your day to do some meditation. It's part of my morning routine. Every single morning, it's important for me. I just I feel I just feel like I don't my day isn't isn't set up properly or isn't set up for success if I don't get that meditation in. So hopefully you feel the same way. If you're new to meditation, give it a try. I gotta tell you, it's okay to meditate for a short amount of time. It's okay if sometimes you stop meditating. You gotta jump back on the train, dust yourself off, and get back in the game. Once again, thank you so much for being here. All past shows are going up on exploringmindandbody.com. So if you ever miss a show, you can always check out past shows there. If you're looking for some help to get going in the right direction, we do a lot of meal planning. We do recipes, grocery shopping. We show you how to save time in the kitchen. We show you how to save money in the grocery store. We can also show you how to reduce stress through at-home workouts as well. All those details are going up on trueformlife.com. If we can help out in any way, we're very active on social media. Facebook.com slash trueformlife or Instagram.com slash Drew Tadia. Go ahead, shoot us a message. Let us know how you've been enjoying the show. Or if you have any topic requests you'd love to hear, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Once again, thank you so much for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening.
You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.